駅です。
So to go through the purification, uh, after the final HPLC purification, this slide shows a oligochromide gel of the samples that were run on it, and piece of data migrates at a 25,000 molecular weight uh, entity, shown by the arrow on the right, in samples, in this case, between 56 and 60. So, um, Dr. Zinn, so Peter Bader was really born at the NCI, and Dr. Michael Warren and Nita Roberts are credited as being the trap down of this molecule. So, so following the certification of Peter Bader, we realized the sequence of Peter Bader, now Peter Bader 1 was determined, and Peter Bader 1 was shot to initially exist as a pre-first Peter Bader entity consisting of 391 amino acids, having a signal peptide at the amino terminus, a middle section which was to turn the late seat associated at Dr. Lab, and a mature Peter Bader. Uh, protein consisting of 112 amino acids at the peak permanent. Now, shown at the top of the cartoon of the amino acid sequence of secret beta, human secret beta 1, and I'd like to draw your attention to the nine amino residues uh, in the uh, cartoon because these are very reminiscent and characteristic of the secret beta and the secret beta family. Now, following the purification and sequencing of amino acid sequencing of secret beta, uh, the crystal structure of secret beta was, uh, was performed in the early 90s. And this happens to be the crystal structure of secret beta 2, because evidently it was much easier to crystallize secret beta 2 than secret beta 1. So, the structure of secret beta 2 is a dimer consisting of two identical monomers to held together by an interchange of sulfide bonds. The form of the hydrophobic bonds, and in the pocket, are the nine dimer bonds that are consisting residues that form a structure called the hypotherm that is seen now. It's really the matriarch of what is called the Tigre Beta superfamily. Uh, this is a superfamily consisting of five Tigre Beta like forms, Tigre Beta 1, Tigre Beta 1, that are found in mammals, and Tigre Beta 4, found in the chicken, and Tigre Beta 5, and Tigre Beta 1, 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 and Uh, uh, over as well. 
she's now in addition to her tumor suppressor properties, she can she just beta has own also been shown to act as a be able to act as a tumor promoter. So in this case, she beta one has been shown to be elevated in many advanced uh, types of human tumors and to be correlated with metastasis or or for prognosis. And the lung the lung is part of this, this list of uh, tumor types. And shown in the uh, the lower right hand corner is the same as the left staining of a prosthetic ethno personal staining of the beta one. And you see the brown staining teacher beta is that the interface between the tumor growing tumor and the microenvironment. So, it's, what does Peter Bates do in carcinogenesis? Is it a hero as a tumor suppressor or a villain as a tumor promoter? Well, it turns out that it's a very complex story and it turns out that Peter Beta can be both. Peter Beta can be a proximal detector of emotion from a skin type. It can also act as a close growth inhibitor and tumor suppressor. And it can be a pro metastatic factor. Much, is, much of this is, uh, is relegated to the context of the environment. So, a unifying process has been developed over the many years, and, and it seems that Chico 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 and if changes occur in the genetic and epigenetic context as tumor genesis proceeds, secret beta responsiveness goes down and it evolves, and at the same time, expression and activation of secret beta is increased. So, with, as tumor genesis proceeds to metastasis, the proactogenic activities tend to start to dominate over the tumor suppressor activity and increase with uh, uh, tumor genesis and metastasis. So, now I'm going to shift to uh, the story becomes a little more complex. And I just told you about the plant dependent pathways for secret beta. Well, it turns out that there are uh, a number of different plant independent pathways by which secret beta can also operate. This includes all the tech jump pathway, the rest of the pathway, the rotate pathway, and the protein buffer takes the weight pathway that functions in different types of cells. So we, we became more interested in the rat mass timing pathway in our studies of bone tumor genesis because the K-Rats protoncopene has been shown to be activationally mutated into at least 25 to 50% of human lung adult carcinomas. It's been further shown that mutation in one allele of K-Rats increases the appearance of, of uh, human lung lesions. In addition, it's been shown to be added close up between the magic tendon pathway and the rat pack signaling pathway. And activation of the rat pathway can modulate the feature beta signaling pathway for the trans protein. And finally, in vitro studies have shown that feature beta dominates over the mitogenic protective breath, but that activated breath can override the interpolicative effect of secret beta. So there seems to be an interplay between possible interplay between feature beta and k -Rat. Yes? And I'll help I can answer your questions. Okay, so how does secret beta be involved in tumor suppression and then in tumor promotion? Well, in all our care, we use at least four different pathways. Uh, yeah, in order to uh, activate the tumor promotion pathway, one can have your, one can have decreased level of activity that's effectively a process, or one can have a hyperactivated pathway through activation of the rest. Thirdly, you can have a decreased level of activity of the plant protein, and the fourth uh, possibility is a compromised effective function in this professor along with the secret beta pathway. Or these are possibilities. So we kind of try to test them out. So the core goal of our lab was to determine the role of secret beta in the development and knowledge and transformation of one epithelial cell. And this work was done in the epithelial carcinogenic protection of the cell and cancer biology plant, or the PR. We have seen that the first examining effect of secret beta solution in KRAS mutation alone and in combination on lung tumor incidence and pathology. This determines the early events that occur in the development of one lesion in their progression with tumor genesis, and then to identify any potential signal transduction pathway changes that occur with increasing tumor genesis. So to do this, we employ four math models. The AK math model, uh, the secret to the secret beta one hypothetical map, the AK to the black six secret beta one hypothetical map, and the secret beta one hypothetical pair of replacement available now. And I'll quickly describe these four experiments. We have two questions. The first is long tumor genesis affect the secret beta signal pathway, and the reciprocal question is the secret beta signal pathway affect long tumor genesis. So we first started our study with using the AJ math model. Yeah, this math model is very susceptible to chemically induced lung tumors. And the tumors are developed develop in a time, very time-dependent time manner with the appearance of hyperplasia adenomas and carcinomas. And the carcinomas that develop are physiologically similar to human lung adenocarcinomas. In addition, the same molecular mutations occur in both human and mouse lung tumors, such as overexpression of KRAS and loss of PCC3. So we, we begin the study using ethyl carbamate as the carcinogen. Ethyl carbamate can be metabolized in two pathways. There's a detoxification pathway along the left that's, uh, uh, that's uh, involved in SRA and just uh, uh, proceeds to harm the methanol to the pneumonia. There's another pathway, a bioactivation pathway, that occurs for the 2E1 in the lung. And this results in vinyl carbamate and a vinyl carbamate epoxide that our agents that are able to bind to macromolecules of DNA in subduing bad events. So uh, to produce the, the tumors in the aging mice, we injected mice with two month old mice with uh, ethyl carbonate and sacrificed groups of 20 mice uh, over monthly, uh, monthly intervals over 12 months. Shown here is an immunostaining pattern 
of teacher beta 1, the type 1 teacher beta receptor, and the type 2 receptor, type 2 teacher beta receptor in malfunction with the very age. Now, we see uh, enhanced ground training for teacher beta 1 in the type 1 receptor in tumors on 2 months, 4 months, and 8 months, like plus months. Like. But if you look at the panel on the, on the right, for the type 2 receptor, you will see that uh, there's, decrease, there's significantly decreased training for the type 2 receptor in 2 months, 1 month tumors, and virtually not just training for the type 2 receptor in 4 months and 8 months tumors, not 1 tumor. This is shown uh, more strikingly on the left, where we compare staining for the type 1 receptor and the type 2 receptor, where we see uh, very uh, ground staining for teacher beta type 1 receptor in about the tumor shown in pink, in the panel A and B, as well as in the accompanying uh, normal lung bronchial shown in red. We, when we look at staining for the type 2 receptor, we will see uh, significant staining in the normal lung bronchial and panel D and D, shown by the red arrow, we see virtually uh, secret staining for the this receptor in the tumors. We also look at the MRI for the type 1 and type 2 receptors, and we show uh, levels of the type 1 receptor in all of the uh, left on cell lines. When you look at the type 2 receptor in the lower right panel, you will see that there is decreased expression of the type 2 receptor in LM11 and the PTC4 cell line. The PTC4 lines are, are strikingly because this is known to be derived from an epicarbon made in just one tumor. So we also uh, looked at the expression of these proteins in this early age of aging mouth lung tumors, and using uh, immunistic chemical staining to see uh, uh, very much uh, the same expression staining that we saw with this carbon A, namely, uh, in June staining for PJ beta 1 and the type 1 receptor, the decrease in person of the type 2 receptor, showing that the bottom of the slide is immunistic of chemical staining for PJ beta 1, the normal lung bronchial, as well as PJ beta 1 and the type 1 and the type 1 and the type 1 and the type 1. So we see decreased uh, expression of the protein versus the type 2 receptor in the tumors. Now we also performed the uh, NCT hybridization for looking at the mRNAs of these proteins in the middle of the slide and, uh, um, and the expression of the mRNA for the CJ beta 1 as well as the type 1 receptor. When we look for the, the staining for the uh, type 2 receptor, it's much decreased going along with the decreased level of the protein in these tumors. So our model shows that we're using the aging right that there is decreased levels and activities of the type 2 receptor in you know, that model system, which, which uh, goes along with promotion of one tumor. Our next question was to determine whether the lesion of the beta 1 is affected along some mechanisms. And for this, we employed the 257 by 6 TK beta 1 map. Now, the 257 by 6 TK beta 1 knockout map was generated in the 80s. It was born and rise, but about three weeks into birth, it is home to a general weight gain syndrome. So, this kind of map is not very good for long term partial identity studies. So, but when we look at the TK beta 1 hypothesis, it is born and rise, and it can proliferate into the adult cell.
2017, 2018, when they are doing the research here, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Arifan Benesi, I'm an NFIPI, in the biology and biology branch, and as you see, I'm representing on behalf of the Liberal Union of the Group. Today we have one of the few main lecturers in the series of the United States Director's Lecture, seeing that the show was voted for by directors of the United States. Um, the, reason that, the reason I brought this not part of my script here um, because um, it is impossible not to feel overwhelmed when one uh, even attempts to uh, introduce a uh, And um, it's not really only because um, after performing crazy um, experiments uh, in the Einstein field uh, as a young faculty at Harvard Medical School, um, he decided that he was not satisfied with the resolution of the experiments that the Ben studies were providing him and um, decided to uh, crystallize a production channel, which was at that point in time considered an impossible by many established crystallographers. And not only because after receiving the Nobel Prize um, at a very young age, he continued to push the frontiers of the Ion Channel and the Membrane Protein uh, Research Field uh, by solving the first structure of a eukaryotic connection channel in 2005, um, incidentally the first eukaryotic membrane protein structure to be solved through general lobbyification. And also not because at a stage in his career, uh, when others were chosen to lead from the back, uh, this is when I was a postdoc with um, he would regularly come to the front stage, say after midnight, past midnight, brought in crystallographic data, and then show up in the morning at 10 o'clock, um, and continue work on it. And not only because that made that into public will, um, uh, when the structure of the first two four connection channel uh, came out, one thing was entirely actionable from experiments done by Ron Stone. Um, because, um, like we, the proverbial of uh, individual in bed, men trying to gauge an elephant, uh, these are really quite significant of broad scientific personnel. Uh, the hallmark of which is really his GT investment, untiring single minded and similarly insightful pursuit of the problem, trying to allow his life, how I shall want. That is both exemplary and inspiration. I am not eligible for his awards because they are not really because of broad office. Uh, she has few experiences. Right after I came in, I need a postdoc pro, so you have to go that, uh, excuse me, um, after coming back for a year postdoc, I get brought there. That he was both surprised and shocked, and I was not. Because his own word that was not just uh, in nature, he liked to get the key this slope of flowing curve, which was referring to the latest breakthroughs of the Austin car again, that really demonstrated both structural biology and the Einstein field, the latter uh, much too broad for one. When I came to Austin as a postdoc, um, I was surprised um, how small this seminar room was for a lab that center. And I quickly realized that what that did was it focused everyone's attention onto the screen. And almost every group meeting, um, we would have advocated discussions that occasionally ended with Ross Boyce slowly writing over the rest of us. And as everyone else pointed down, um, Ron would share almost as a soliloquy his insights on the issue. Unfortunately, these are some of the deepest moments of learning of my life that I often don't get back to. Um, we are lucky to have the NIH, Ross turns down daily in addition to any steps uh, without taking any more time away from him. Thank you for coming to the NIH, Ross. Thank you very much for that more than kind introduction, Arvan, and thank you um, for those who, did, who invited me here. It's an honor to be here and talk about some of the work from my lab. Um, yeah, and also in terms of, you know, in terms of advances that my lab has been able to make, you know, it's a very good example of, um, you know, how the whole enterprise of science is amazing because in a way, I, my whole career has been basically a parasite of great technological advances that others have made, um, both in the development of electrophysiological methods, the development of crystallographic methods, and now more recently, uh, those who developed the hardware and software behind the new revolution of structural biology that has enabled cryo-electron microscopy uh, to, to be the technique of choice for atomic structure now. Um, so it's just really great to be uh, in a society and in a world where we can pursue science with so much um, at our hands. So I'm going to talk about the subject I love, and that is the biophysics and biology of the Tapian channels. And I'll talk about that with just two examples of projects we've worked on in the lab over the last few years. Um, and first, though, I'll give a brief introduction to a particular kind of ion channel, so the Tapian channels. And um, so this slide is a cartoon picture of a cell, um, and cell membrane and nucleus. And in the membrane, I show sodium and potassium ATPA, the important, the, the important pump that concentrates potassium inside the cell and sodium outside the cell. And then I show a variety of ion channels that are passive conduits of ions across the membrane. On the top here, I show the Tapian channels that are hyperpolarizing. And what that means is when potassium channels are open, as some are at rest in most cell membranes, potassium runs down its concentration gradient until it charges the leaves a negative charge, uh, net negative charge behind, and we say charges the capacitance of the cell membrane so that the voltage on the inside, the voltage across the membrane, balances the chemical driving force out. So that's the inverse potential for potassium, and that's the origin of the resting membrane potential in most cells. Um, then you can have another channel, like a sodium channel, of course, when it opens, so it rushes down its electrochemical gradient, causing any polarization or switch in the charge across the capacitance of the membrane. But that process is always stopped then by something like a sodium activated potassium channel, sodium entering, will open additional potassium channels and restore the membrane potential. The potassium channels set the resting potential, and they tend to stop the predatory processes. Uh, they could have basically put a gate on it, and so stop excitation. Uh, the potassium channel family is very large, so there are approximately 80 members uh, of the potassium channels in us. And this is just to give some idea of their biological goals, not to say it in detail, but there's a class here called the rectifiers, and they do many things that regulate the rhythm of the heart. They're important in neuronal excitation, important in secretion of hormones. Here, and what's our current understanding of why this is such a broad family? Um, it's, it's my way of the bio 